Preparing your desktop. I normally recommend that you record at full screen. In my case, it facilitates moving around windows and presenting things on the screen without really having to struggle recognizing where my recording area is. So I recommend that you record full screen. And if you're going to be recording full screen, the dimensions of your recording really matter. The size of your recording is important because of two reasons. The first one is related to process. The process of recording your video, editing your video, uploading your video, rendering your video. The bigger your video gets in size, the longer each one of these processes is going to be. Reducing the size of your recording also facilitates your production process. The second reason is usability considerations and it is related to how your students are going to use your videos. If your recording is too big, the size of certain text in your interfaces is going to become very, very small and somewhat unusable for your students. So it's better to set the dimensions of your screen to a reasonable size so your process is manageable and so your students can have a good appreciation of all the things in your monitor. There are two common ratios in computer monitors. The first one is four by three, and this means four units wide by three units high. And this is the typical dimensions of your televisions. And we inherited those for computer monitors for a very long time. The way that you can calculate these four by three ratio dimensions is by multiplying each one of these numbers by a different factor. So for example, if we multiply these by 10, we arrive to 40 by 30. If we multiply them by 40, we arrive to these numbers and so on. For this type of computer monitors with this ratio, I would like to recommend that you use a maximum of 1024 pixels wide by 768 pixels high. Anything beyond that might be too difficult for your students to appreciate and a little bit longer for you to manage during your production process. The other common ratio is 16 by 9, and this is following more of a cinema-like type of monitor. And in this case, the dimensions that I would like to recommend, or the maximum recommended dimensions that I would like to give you, is 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels high. Now, if you have a monitor that has a different ratio, I recommend that you pay attention mostly to the wide dimension and try not to go anything above 1280 for whatever size it is in height. If you do that, chances are your recording will be easy to make and your students will be able to appreciate all the textual elements in the interfaces that you show. Also, you can prepare your desktop by cleaning it. In my case, I don't have any files in this screen because I am using two monitors. And if I were using only one monitor, chances are I would have something like this. I would have my computer, I would have my recycle bin, and I would have a folder where I will drop all of my files and all of my programs into that folder so my screen is completely clear. In this case, because I have two monitors, I have the ability to take this out of here and just leave an empty recording area. You can also see that I selected to have a black background. And this solid background facilitates a lot my work because there are no distractions for my students or personal images that, um, that later on I will not like to have in my recordings. So the way I prepare my desktop is by clearing all the icons and also by setting up a solid color for the recording. Finally, I recommend setting a big cursor. The cursor, as you have been seeing in my recordings, is a way to call the attention of your viewers to different things in your recording. The bigger the cursor is, 
the better it is your ability to direct your attention to different things. So I would recommend that you change the cursor, not really because you need it, but mostly because your students will get a better experience from your recordings if you do so.